What's up? This is Jeff from Glyph, and you are watching the Brutally Delicious Podcast. What's up, dudes? I'm Dark Masic with Brutally Delicious, and I'm here with Jeff from Glyph. How the hell are you, man? I'm Will. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Mm -hmm. So we're here in Madison, Wisconsin, mm -hmm. at the Man With Power Festival. This is your first live appearance in a couple months, right? Yeah. Last one would have been the, uh, I want to say, April 21st in Nashville. It was the end of our tour, tour with Hailstorm. Yeah. yeah. So um, this isn't even really a well-formed question. You've had quite the year. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, you want to just talk? Like, <laughs> Let's just go off. Yeah, it's 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 been a year because we um, for for anyone who was at the festival last year, they saw the premiere of Glyph. So they announced Glyph like we basically just announced Glyph publicly as a band that day. It's like a year, literally a year ago today is when we announced the band. We premiered the first song and everything. Um, we we put out a couple singles online, and we were approached by L Storm to do the um, the spring tour across all of North America with them. Prepared for that, um, we got our album out kind of around the same time that that tour kicked off. Uh, the the initial plan actually was to premiere like like have the live debut of the band today. That was the original plan, and it, and it was going to be our album release party. So we were going to have like a whole year to kind of prep and prepare and get everything like, set up for that. But uh, but instead we got asked to tour with Alestorm. So we said okay, album comes out. Uh, let's see, three months ahead of schedule, four months ahead of schedule, and we hit the road running. And uh, yeah, and then. Did the tour, phenomenal tour, loved every second of it, and then lost the singer, and uh, now we are here to kind of put a bow on things. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting way of phrasing it. But, um, <laughs> so, like, uh, Honor, Power, Glory came out, what was it, March? Uh, yeah, March uh, 29th, I believe yeah. was the day. I saw you March 24th, so that was a Sunday. Yeah, that would make sense. Cool. Um, so, obviously, like, it sounds like the band had a real kick-ass start. Um, that album obviously got great reviews. Um, mm -hmm. I was not at Mad with Power last year, but my friends and I who saw you, like we were going for Hellstorm, and we were like, "Shit, these guys are good." Uh, and then obviously hit a bit of a bump in the road. But do you, do you feel optimistic about the future? I do. Yeah, I do. It was it was definitely it was it was like a pretty big punch in the gut. You know, the the whole situation, and uh, we kind of had to take like a couple weeks to sort of step back and process and decompress a little bit because it happened like right after we got home it happened like a week after we got home um so it was pretty it was it was pretty tough to deal with especially coming off of like the high of releasing our album and having a lot of buzz and uh the tour going so well for us and everything so it was definitely a bit of a smack in the face kicking the kicking the balls um but as as time went on we started talking about our mad with power appearance and what we wanted to do for that and we started getting amped up and the engine is back up and running we have uh, we just released like um, an 8-bit remix of Honor, Power, That's Glory fun. a couple days ago, which was super fun. We, we got all kinds of like really cool stuff uh, lined up, and we got new music uh, coming out cool. later. <laughs> we don't. I can't say much more because we don't have much more to say yet. But there's yeah. new music being worked on this year, next year. Um, it it depends on what happens after the festival. So there's 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 music written. But there's a couple thing. There's a couple steps we gotta gotta deal with when the festival wraps up before we really like hit the ground with that. With that, so hopefully by hopefully the end of this year. But I can't make any promises yet. Well, looking forward to it. You and uh, uh were you so were, did you see Fellowship last night? Yeah, yeah, we got in time just to see Fellowship. I mean, so they they just announced yesterday. They called it a Christmas timed album. It's actually about. <laughs> It's about a week before Thanksgiving, but you know, okay. I think, like, you two should do like some kind of a joint thing yeah, for yeah. Like, end of the year releases. That'd be really but, sweet. Uh, we we just met those guys uh, yesterday, and they're super sweet, like the like the friendliest dudes. And yeah, we're 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 gonna we're gonna make some plans with them. So, oh, hey, we're gonna make well, some plans with them. Okay, so, okay. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, we we're all we're also playing. Uh, we have like our first overseas show uh, next year uh, in Denmark at Epic Fest, and we're playing with yeah. them at that as well. So. Yeah, we got we got we got a couple little tent poles of fun lined up with those guys. Uh, uh, this has nothing to do with like anything I plan to ask, but like, I'm ten I'm planning on going to Epic. Hopefully, I'll be oh, able yeah. to talk to you or someone else in the band then. Sweet. Um, <laughs> Ross Gilda, uh, is that how you pronounce it? I, I, I think. Yeah. But I don't know. <laughs> I, it's like you know, I'm trying to basically like for most. I think most of our audience is American, and you know, I certainly am. Like, um, 
Like, do you know much about that festival? Like, we're here at Madame Power, we're talking about a competitor. I'm an asshole. But <laughs> <laughs> they're so far away, though. It's fine. Yeah. I, I think of them as like brothers and brother, brothers in arms, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I don't really know much about it. There's a couple, a couple of our pals um, overseas, uh, like like internet pals, yeah. have played it in the past or attended. I think there's, I think there might even be a couple people here who attended last year. Everyone says it was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it's going to be a blast. I think it's a little bit different in that it's like a multi-venue uh, festival. So this all happens at like the Sylvie, but uh, I think Epic Fest is um, two or three venues that are all like really close to each other. I didn't realize that. Okay. Yeah. So like a different, different kind of a different kind of a thing. It's like like Maryland Death Fest is like several venues yeah. scattered around like a neighborhood. I think uh, Epic Fest is a similar set. Sure. Sure. Okay. So we're here now. Yes. Um, Spoilers, except that it'll, by the time this goes live, it'll be too late. Mm-hmm. You got Barbara singing for you. Uh, yeah. Barbara yeah. Blackthorne from Empress. That's uh, right. Let's just say some kind of tangential connection to the band. <laughs> Slightly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I was joking with friends yesterday because I was not with it on it. And I'm like, mm-hmm. wouldn't that be kind of on the nose if she sang this show? <laughs> um, so, yeah, you want to talk about that decision? I mean, <clears throat> yeah, so that, that was a thing. Um, a, a few weeks after the, uh, the incident with our, with our original yeah. singer went down, we, we were just on a call of just kind of talking about what we wanted to do or like what we're going to do with the shows that we currently have booked and things like that. And then our bassist, Darren, uh, he, he, uh, Barbara was uh, staying at his place for a little while and he just kind of had the idea and he pitched it to us on the phone and on, on a big group call and we all just said, yeah, that's crazy. Like, that's wild. We should do, we should do that. Like what, 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 like a badass like. We're all like fans of wrestling and shit. <laughs> we're all like, that, that's we're, the chair. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, we're we're all, we're all especially uh, especially uh, Rob and Darren. They're just like, man, if we like make it as secret as possible, and then just like blast her out like in front of the audience this year, and just have like a huge. Um, a huge announcement, a huge fanfare, but like keep it really secret leading up to it, just like unveiling like a new hero character kind of a thing. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it was, it was yeah, it was, it was like one of those one of those schemes that we just had a lot of fun with. Okay, so is, is this like a one time deal, or is she like is she in the band? What's going on there? So we, it's, it's a little tough to say. So so, so the plan is um, we're gonna we're gonna start holding auditions. Um, and we, we haven't really had a conversation with Barbara about about what happens after this yet. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna open up auditions at the end of it. But um, if Barbara is interested, we would love to put her in the running. So we'll kind of we'll kind of see what happens. We're we're basically just like right now we're just trying to do this festival and have a really awesome time. And it's the rehearsals have been a lot of fun. They've been really cool. So it, I it, it'd be really cool if it works out. So we'll we'll have to see what she thinks. She just announced that she's gonna be singing with Helium Prime and stuff like that. So I don't know how busy she is these days. So sure, sure. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. The sound check sounded tremendous. I thought that oh, was cool. usually I thought that was where singers like took it easy so they could preserve their voices. <laughs> but I'm like, wait, mm-hmm. what? Yeah, she's uh, a pro. Yeah, she's really of, good. Of course, of course. Uh, so you just mentioned potential plans of fellowship, but my follow up was gonna be. Um, if you said she's not going to be, this is a one-time thing, um, whatever, make of this what you will. Can we expect a Glyph Empress tour in the future? Maybe, um, maybe. That, that, that was a plan that we were originally going to do, mm-hmm. leading up to uh, the Mad with Power before, uh, before things kind of fell apart. We had uh, four shows in June booked with them. We were going to do like, like a bunch of Western Canadian shows they are coming over for that. And then, of course, that all kind of you know, went down the tubes. <laughs> so there's a there's a there's a good chance we'll be hooking up with the Empress folks down the road. Okay, okay. I'm saying I would love to see that tour. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I actually I actually haven't seen Empress yet. Really? Yeah, yeah. That's right. They're they're like they're well they're they're so I live in like the West Coast. I live in Vancouver, mm-hmm. and you know they're out in Philly, and they haven't they haven't come up this way, and I'm. I'm like never out that way either. Did, did that Seven Kingdoms tour not hit near you or? No, no. Uh, no also, I think that it was like different openers for each wag, but yeah. I think so, yeah. But Seven Kingdoms hasn't. I don't think they. I don't know if they've ever been to Vancouver. They might. They might have, but. I uh, have. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. Uh, yeah, I was fortunate. Uh, Empress was on 70k 2023. That was the first one after COVID, and then I saw them open up for Seven Kingdoms, and you know, obviously, like mm-hmm. great band, like great everybody all around. Barbara's a phenomenal vocalist, as yeah, we yeah. just saw. Mm-hmm. So, but that. The other thing is like waiting to the next question. Um, 
I talked to Ty Christian yesterday, because like, you know, organizer of this, singer of Words of the Trident. Uh, visa costs for foreign bands are getting out of control. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, actually, I guess you're Canadian. It probably happens to you too. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm on a P2 visa right now. Yeah. So, what does that mean? Is that like for a day or something? Or? No. So, uh, so the the P2 visa process. Now, I'm I'm a little fuzzy on some of the details, but basically, if you have a show or like a tour booked. Then you uh, you take all your dates and you take all your contracts for your performances and you take that to um, uh, so so in Canada we have like a musicians union and our we basically submit all of our paperwork to the Canadian Federation of Musicians and then they take that to uh, the uh, the American government the like immigration um, USCIS or something like whatever the department is and then um, and they run all the paperwork for us basically but we have, but it costs a bunch of money you have to do it. Um, when we were when we did it, you had to submit about three months in advance. Now it's more like three to six months in advance. Right. It kind of depends on how backed up their staff is, basically. Mm -hmm. And it costs a bunch of money. It's easier for Canadians and for people from overseas. Like I'm sure, like the costs for myself and my Canadian bandmates to come down were a lot lower than like what Fellowship had yeah. would have had to pay for. Are you all in Vancouver? Because that's like what an hour drive from Seattle. So it's, it's closer to three, depending on border travel. Oh, please. but uh, but yeah, I, I'm in Vancouver, and then everyone else is kind of in the Seattle area. Um, and our original singer was from, was from Calgary, Canada. Mm -hmm. So it's two Canadians in the band. Um, but uh, our bassist Darren, he's like a, he's originally from Vancouver. Okay. But he's emigrated uh, down south. So he's, so he's got a citizenship and his his cool yeah. like like. Eagle passport. <laughs> I got one of those too. Yeah. yeah. So, where I was going with that is like, I mean, even if you do have to pay those visa fees, um, you can still drive. Like, Fellowship had to fly across the fucking ocean. Yeah, yeah. Um, can we, do you think like this will, is, I don't love this idea of like tripling the visa costs, but is there like a silver lining if we get more US or at least North American, excuse me, power metal tours? I don't know. I mean, I mean, so the, the tripling visa cost thing, I think, is um, a little bit of a it, it's it's a a little bit misinformationy. Things have gone up in price, but um, it's the the initial cost of the petition for the whole band. It's not per member. So so when you petition, you're petitioning on on behalf of your entire group, right? As a, uh, and, and you know, then then there are there are individual costs associated, like per person. But that's more for like your union dues and things like that, right? So um, so the cost for the entire petition has gone up. I don't know if it's gone up like three times, but it has gone up. It has gone up a bit. Um, it's mainly the uh, the processing times that kill bands, honestly. Mm -hmm. And then if, and then if you leave it too late, then you have to pay. Then you have to pay triple for premium processing. Then you can get it done on a tighter timeline. Um, it does suck, but, but the, the thing about that, the thing about the visa process is as annoying and as like crappy as it is, it fluctuates all the time. The pro, like ten years ago, the prices were crazy, and then when we uh, we mean meaning Glyph, when we did our American P two visas for the Aelstrom tour and for this festival, the prices had, got, had gone down quite a bit, and the waiting times had also gone down quite a bit. So it's like every year it seems to change. It's always in flux. So. Um, to, to answer your question more specifically, I don't, I don't, I don't really know. I always think like America has, has like some of the coolest bands in the style. So I like to see, I like to see these festivals popping up like Mad, like Mad with Power and Mile High over in, uh, I think De it's Denver. Denver, Denver, that's right. And, and so forth. I like seeing those other festivals pop up and hopefully it draws more attention to like North American talent because it's, mm -hmm. it's really important. The European bands have had too good for too long. You know? <laughs> But um, but at the same time, it's important for like it's important for the fans to get to see their favorite bands from overseas that don't get to come over very often. So mm -hmm. you know, uh, I was gonna say for like the longest time as a power metal fan, like I'm from New York, you know, mm -hmm. so most major tours hit us. But it was like mm -hmm. you know last year Rhapsody toured for the first time in 11 years or something. Mm -hmm. uh, thankfully, Windrose made it over, yeah. and I got to see you know you guys with Elstorm, like um, although I think Chris is in like Tennessee now, but. Um, yeah, it is, yeah. yeah, it's like basically you're lucky if you get one or two Euro metal tours a year. Mm -hmm. um, but th thank you for the education. I had no idea about the uh, misinformation bit. Yeah, thank you for that. Oh, yeah, no worries. It, it was going around quite a bit at that time. I mean, but <clears throat> we're, we're in kind of a gold rush for, for tours right now, though. Like this, the, the, the past couple of years, like post the reopening of the, yeah. the traveling and things like that with the, with the pandemic and whatnot, there's been kind of a gold rush of bands. When we were on the road, it would like, you know, like Wind Rose is on tour, but then also Glory Hammer was on mm -hmm. tour and Twilight Force was going around and stuff like that. Um, Beast in Black has been through, Dragon Force was also on the road at the same time as us. And, and there, there have been a couple of initiatives by like, like Live Nation, for example, uh, to 
uh, pay, like basically pay bands out extra money and provide them with like gas cards on the road and stuff like that, which is oh. kind of cool of them. Um, it's probably not going to last forever, but I think when um, Live Nation announced they were doing that initiative, I think a lot of bands were like, oh, this is a perfect time to go to North America right now. I, so, I, I had never heard of that. Yeah, it's called uh, On the Road Again. Huh. Yeah. Oh, hey, it sounded like a propitious thing. You, you think that's coming to a close? or? I mean, it, it's, it can't last forever because it, 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 without, like, like, our tour with Ailstorm was really, really awesome, both, like, in terms of bringing the band out and meeting people and making new fans and stuff like that, but also, like, financially, it was very good for us, too. And uh, a lot of that was because of that On the Road Again program. They put a lot, they, they kind of saved us a lot of money on gas and put a lot of extra dough in our pockets which is not normally the case. So I, I have a feeling that there's going to be a window that shuts on that and things will go back to being a little bit, a little bit tougher. Yeah. But they, they're, they're always tough in, in music and in the art stuff. Sure, sure, sure. Well, hey, is there anything else you want to say about the future of Glyph and like when we can expect to see you again? I mean, I, I hope to see everyone back on stage really, really soon after today. It might take us a little bit of time just because we got to we have to do a bit more regrouping and like really figure out exactly what's going to happen. Um, all, all I do know for certain is that we are going to be opening a vocal auditions uh, to the public. So anyone who wants to give it a shot, we're more than welcome to, to have them try out. Um, we do have our Epic Fest appearance booked overseas and we're workshopping some stuff around that. So hopefully, there, hopefully there'll be a tour at some point with that. And we have a lot of really other cool uh, plans set up with a bunch of our friends and other bands. Um, there, there's gonna be some really cool guest appearances coming up, some, some re-recordings and things like that. It's really, really exciting and we're, like, we're, we're just trying to keep the ball rolling. That's all there, that's all there is to it. So. Awesome. Thank yeah. you so much, man. No worries. Appreciate you having me. <laughs>